we're super stoked that you came to join us here for some karaoke. Is everyone ready to sing? I said, is everyone ready to sing? Hit it! Um, my name is Kim Bensivaliganti. I'm a queer, non-binary Filipinex. I'm an artist, I'm a musician, a performer, and a visual artist. My parents immigrated from the Philippines to Canada, so I was born here on unceded Coast Salish territory. My parents really wanted us to get a good education. Like when they immigrated to Canada, they were like, we got to make sure our kids make it here. And in a lot of ways, that meant assimilating to white Canadian culture. Good education, straight A's, good job, not speak Tagalog. So they enrolled us to Pacific Academy, which is this Christian private elite school in the suburbs of Surrey. I always compared myself to girls in my classroom that all the boys had crushes on, or even like my older sister. Like I was never pretty like them. I really hated my nose. When I was six years old, I remember my aunt telling me, you have a flat nose. And so every night I would pinch my nose like this for like hours. And then in the morning, I would look in the mirror and be like, oh, it's pointier. Kids in school, like all these boys would like, whenever I pass them, they would make monkey noises when I pass them. Growing up, I didn't really have a connection to, to Filipino culture. Like, finding that identity was not readily in front of me. And I didn't feel like I related to the white kids. And I didn't relate to the East Asians in my grade. So I was like, okay, who am I? What makes me me? And you look all over the place to try to find a reflection of yourself. And so I was like, what do I love? And I found hip hop. I renamed myself Kim Mortal, good for the never sees. I see the book, but forgot my own reflection. Welcome to the sad fans. My first entry into my favorite hip hop artist was Lil Bow Wow. Yeah, I know what and I, I remember finding his CD at Walmart and being like, I want this. And I memorized every single lyric in that album. I started choreographing to every song, teaching my friends the choreography. I would draw the dance moves and then I would show it to my friends and we'd perform at like talent showcases. I started getting known as like a talented performer. Now, will I just be dismissed right now? Will I just be dismissed? Welcome to the sad fam club, baby. You are eating. Realized and noticed how I was getting a lot of like feeling so empowered. And also the white boys would stop making fun of me. They wouldn't make racist monkey noises whenever I pass them. And I felt like I understood myself on a deeper level. And I could set myself apart from like white students or like Asian students. I was like unique. After graduating from high school, I began to pursue writing music on my guitar. And then years after, I taught myself how to produce music. So I started rapping over like instrumentals I found on YouTube. And there was this one night I remember rapping in front of this audience and there was one um, a black activist and artist in the audience that came up to me after and was like, hey, um, I was wondering, why don't you um, talk about your story being Filipino 
and rap about that and talk about your rich culture. And I was like, oh. Like that sparked me. It definitely informed the years after in my journey through music of like, what am I talking about in my lyricism? So this whole decade has been me trying to understand my authentic voice. Who am I as like Filipinx, Canadian, queer, influenced by hip hop? What is my art form? We created this space called Pinoy Potluck where Filipino poets, dancers, Comedians, writers came together around food and together we gathered and listened to Filipino artists. This really was a way to celebrate our community. In the last month of 2019, I was invited by the Vancouver Art Gallery to perform on their yearly event called Fuse. And I took that as an opportunity to work with three other Filipino artists in the community. And together we created a multimedia piece that really critically looked at what is Filipino art. And together, we performed this new piece um, in the atrium of the Vancouver Art Gallery. That was a really important process for me to be a part of, to intentionally create as queer Filipinos. I like this one, I like this one. So check it out. Boom. I like that one, yeah. I'm not abandoning hip hop because it's such a part of my art form. Even in this question of like authenticity in like Filipino art, even the song that I learned, the Ilocano song, it was foreign to me because I was not born in the Philippines and it's not my first language. And so there is this element of like discomfort and like really tripping through the big question of like, what is Filipino art? And trying to figure that out through the act of creating and conversing together with other Filipino artists, while at the same time acknowledging how so many of us, including myself, were so influenced by hip hop and African-American black art. The important thing I hope to continue learning is how do I responsibly use this art form if I'm taking from it, how do I give back while using this um, African-American form of art? What would I tell my little 13-year-old self? Critically look at like the influences around you that make you feel bad for being brown, for having looks that are not like other kids in your class, for being of a little lower economic status. Why are you ashamed? Where are these voices coming from?
just hold.